and have enough capability to enter into this global dialogue and uh, cooperation. So we will come back to more or less 1989, because this is the year which is considered as the beginning of this transformation in Eastern Europe. So the collapse of the Berlin Wall, and something which is less known, but for me is even more significant than, uh, than the Berlin Wall, uh, and this is the first not communist or non socialist government which was formed in summer 1989, and this was actually in Poland a few months before the events in uh, uh, East uh, Germany. So at this moment, and it is how many years, uh, 28, 29 years ago, uh, we had in the entire region of Eastern Europe, we had nothing as regards private economy, liberalism, uh, modern capitalism or capitalism at all. So we had uh, no, no business culture, we had no experience, no capabilities, no people understanding what it really means to start building their own future by um, uh, being present in this new system, political and social system. We had uh, we had no capital, we had uh, no institutions of uh, of the world which we know today in India or in, in Europe. So the point of departure was really extremely interesting and it, as it was said uh, at the time, no one ever tried to uh, convert the so-called communist system into uh, a more or less modern capitalism. And this is this was the challenge that was started at the time in Poland, in Hungary, in Czech Republic, in Romania, Bulgaria, and other countries in this in that part of uh, of Europe. So after these twenty eight years, I can say that Poland, for instance, is uh, uh, 25th, 26th economy in the world as regards uh, GDP in absolute terms. Uh, if if I look at capital markets, for instance, which is the something which is the closest to my heart, uh, Poland, uh, or Polish capital market is classified by FTSE Russell as one of the developed markets, and, and there are only 25 developed markets are benefiting from this status in the entire world. Uh, we have uh, a booming economy, we have uh, had the first uh, unicorns, uh, we have companies even investing in India. Uh, a colleague of mine who is controlling a company which is listed on the Warsaw Stock Exchange uh, uh, took over a company uh, with the headquarters here in Bangalore, this is a company which makes um, machine-based translations. Uh, and, and we also have Polish people who, for instance, emigrate to London uh, because the wages and the salaries are better in London than in Poland uh, or in the UK, but they also start they own businesses there, and one of them or two of them are even now enjoying a huge popularity and uh, and are becoming more or less uh, global. So great changes, and these changes occurred only within this space of 20, uh, 20 plus uh, years. Now, of course, the situation is far from being ideal. And I start talking about this, again taking Poland as an example. So, uh, one of the most striking problems that we are coping with is demography. 
uh, something that you do not know is a problem uh, here, but uh, it is a growing problem in the entire European Union, and Poland is not an exception. So we simply do not have enough people that will fuel the, the economic growth and will make this economic progress even more uh, uh, meaningful. So we are inviting Indian workers to come to Poland, and they uh, they do. For instance, uh, as regards Uber drivers, you have when arriving to Warsaw, you have much greater chance to uh, uh, to meet uh, an Indian or Ukrainian driver than the Polish one. But the the problem and like the problem from our perspective is that if uh, people are coming to Poland from India to undertake work and to live there also sometimes, very often they decide to move further west to Germany because the, the, the conditions of life are uh, better uh, uh, there. So uh, demography and this lack of people is one of the most important challenges that we are now uh, facing. The second challenge, or the second necessity, and I think it was also uh, touched upon in the first uh, speech, is a need for uh, for um, for a strategy when it comes to the social and economic development. A strategy that will allow us to avoid some mistakes. Uh, but being more precise, what I understand by mistakes. Um, looking backwards at these 20 years, uh, 25, 27 years, uh, we see the tremendous changes, but we also see pluses and, and minuses. And uh, it would have been much better if this development would have been programmed even more than it had been. So now what we are thinking, and this is the line of thinking that you can uh, encounter in Eastern Europe, now when we are thinking how radically different we can be after the next 20 or 30 years, uh, we have this uh, feeling that it would be much better to have a strategy that will somehow drive this uh, uh, this uh, this change or control this change, rather than to be in a in a drift. We call it a drift, and, and this drift brought mostly good results in the past, and most likely will will bring mostly good results in the future. But the change that we that we will be uh, uh, the change that it, that is ahead of us would have been even more positive for the society if we have this strategy keeping us out of the drift and within these more programmed lines of development. So this is this is something which is one of the concerns in our uh, region now. This, the second observation, when I'm saying that uh, we made this tremendous growth uh, in the region is that, however, the region remains uh, internally uh, uh, remains internally uh, diverse to a significant degree. So we have we have countries which uh, are very close to. Um, well developed societies and economies in the western part of Europe, like Poland, Czech Republic, or Hungary. But we also have countries in the region which uh, did not do enough in order to narrow the gap between themselves and the western part of Europe, and even a gap between them and uh, their peers, you could say, in the region is is enlarging. Um, so, referring 
once again to, for instance, how it can be seen through uh, um, uh, ranking given to financial and capital markets in the region. We have Poland, which is acknowledged as a developed country. We have Czech Republic and Hungary, which are emerging markets, but we also have frontier markets. That this is this is like one notch below emerging in this classification, and we also have non-classified markets, which are so much underdeveloped when it comes to uh, how. The, the financial markets and especially the capital, the capital markets are structured, but they, they, they do not really deserve this uh, uh, term or status of, of a frontier market. So, so the region is by far not homogeneous. Uh, it is very deeply heterogeneous. And it leads me to uh, next remarks. What conclusions or lessons we could draw out of this uh, out of this situation? So the first one um, is that those who waste time they lose, and we have examples of societies which did waste a considerable amount of times. What I mean by that? Instead of reforming, instead of continuously reforming uh, the environment, they were rather happy, or maybe a better word is accustomed to the status quo. While in some cases of more successful transformations within the region, we could observe that. For instance, as in Poland, we have been constantly dissatisfied with the status quo. And this element of dissatisfaction, which did not lead to frustration and we will do nothing because it is everything hopeless, but uh, um, on the contrary, dissatisfaction which pushes to action, this is, I think, a vital element of this successful transformation. And the second element which is needed is the one which I already mentioned about the need of having a strategy. And this strategy should go quite uh, into details. I will give you an example of a mistake which we did in the past in Poland uh, in the lack of such uh, uh, insightful strategy. So, as you, as you probably know, within the European Union we have the different kind of funds, and these funds are normally directed towards countries uh, for which the European Union wants to ensure a better cohesion with the more developed parts of the, of the Union. And Poland has been a big beneficiary of these uh, funds uh, in the past and still is. But the absorption of these funds, and, and also Poland was very efficient when it comes to absorbing the, the funds, so uh, we, we used 99% of what was uh, available to, to us, led to a big social and geographical stratification. So to give you an example, also, uh, and the also region, GDP per capita is around 30,000 euro, which is at the level of the wealthiest European countries. But the poorest region in Poland has only one third of this of this amount. And this is uh, an obvious uh, result of suboptimal use of these European funds because they have been a great factor of, of change. We have Romania in the region, and as it was mentioned, this is the country which I know relatively well because I have been for four years the CEO of the Bucharest Stock Exchange, the, capital, the 
capital of Romania. So uh, we have Bucharest, which is uh, uh, again GDP wise per capita almost as let's say as wealthy as Warsaw, but 150 kilometers driving north of Bucharest, we have the poorest region in in Europe. So so these differences is one of the problems. And the legacy of the lack of this more intelligent economic strategy. So this is something that will have to be addressed in years to uh, in years to come. Now on the micro level, when speaking about enterprises and, and companies, what in my view and based on those experiences, what they must uh, be aware of or think about when running a business. So um, it will not be like you know, revealing something uh, unknown, but maybe it's worth stressing uh, that every business that is going to be set up must or should be constructed from the very beginning as something that will go internationally or global. And this is a need or a necessity which is uh, increasingly obvious at least within the, uh, let's say, entrepreneurial world in Europe. <laughs> that if you uh, set up a business uh, and you think that you will sell products or services to the local market, uh, either you restrain your capability for growth, or maybe even you are deciding at this very moment that you will go bankrupt uh, rather sooner than, than later. So uh, the design of the business should already take into consideration that I will expand, I will go international, I will go cross-border, I will go uh, global. I think that this is something which is uh, really uh, uh, something that entrepreneurs must take into account in Europe more than, for instance, in India. Because in, in Europe, the local markets are relatively uh, small. So, uh, in a sense, we have no choice. Uh, if we want to grow and grow and grow, we have to go out of the boundaries of the local market. But competition does not sleep. So, other people also think that it is uh, it, it is something that it, it is the direction that they have to follow. And if they are better prepared for this because they already had have, have, have structured their business in a way preparing them for this kind of expansion, then uh, the others might uh, not win in this uh, uh, competitive fight. So, when we are in India, maybe this is different because uh, 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 the local market is at the same time uh, semi global <laughs> I would say, uh, even though I see even from our uh, Eastern European perspective a growing business uh, between uh, India and uh, and Europe. So this is uh, this is this is one advice, or one uh, lesson that we drew from from uh, just the, the reality. The second is. And I think that this is valid everywhere and will be important always is uh, to think positively and to simply be courageous in business. So as Churchill said, the success is never complete, the failure is never fatal, uh, it is the, the courage to continue which counts. 
and this is important coupled with this positive thinking. I'd like to tell you that in 1991, when we set up a stock exchange in Warsaw, against this backdrop, which I mentioned before, that uh, it was like on the desert, uh, we managed to set up the stock exchange together with the clearing and settlement system and to make it functional within six months. It was completely impossible to launch a stock exchange within six months' time, but fortunately, we did not know about it. We were not aware that it is completely impossible, and that's why we managed uh, to do so. So, so. so this element, I think, is extremely important in, uh, in business. Then, I have to say something about regulations or rules and regulations because this is also a growing issue uh, as regards running a business in European Union. In the 90s we used to use regulations as something that conveys our business, as something which sets uh, the, uh, the signposts and creates possibilities. Now, the, the whole inflation of regulations, this is rather a minefield. And, uh, uh, and uh, I would say in this way, I, I had a conversation recently with my colleague who is, uh, who is a banker, and banks are extremely heavy regulated with the impact on the, on the businesses, on the, on the clients. And he said to me, listen, this is so now problematic that a lot of good businesses, a lot of uh, very innovative business models are not being set up because of this anticipated, you know, uh, uh, anticipated problems, how to uh, conceive and, and, and found the business, uh, bearing in mind the all you know, data protection, uh, uh, money laundering, uh, um, uh, all sorts of uh, certification uh, that we have to avoid being uh, uh, accused of uh, providing Payment services without this or that license, or that we are, we have, we are carrying the risk of being accused to offer other sorts of financial services without an appropriate license. This is really a nightmare. And, uh, undoubtedly is a factor which slows down the growth in, in Europe rather than accelerates it. So, to have good business lawyers or business people um, aware of these limitations is essential now we are running a business in Europe. Next element which is, uh, which is important and will always be probably is the access to capital. So to have, to have reliable financial um, uh, partners, everyone knows, and uh, even though the possibilities in that area are now richer and more diversified than you know, 20 years ago, because of these strict regulations, the use of capital is not that uh, is not the piece. And the last element I would like to mention is. Also, the capital, but this time not the financial capital, but the human capital, intellectual capital. To have good teams, to have good people, to have uh, people able to innovate. This is also one of the challenges, and I think that this is one of the uh, challenges which is even becoming bigger than, slowly well, bigger and bigger. So, uh, uh, and, and this is an important decisive factor. At least as long as uh, 
will not be replaced by AI algorithms and, and machines, uh, which you know after having read Aran's book is not is not a uh, ironic joke anymore for me because he very um, correctly says that for hundreds of years uh, people considered that many things can be done in the best way by people and now it is changing so an increasing number of things are done in a better way by machines but as long as we will not reach this point when we will be completely replaced by artificial intelligence to have good people on board is really important to also to win in this competition um, I would like to use your patience more moreover I think we are at a lunch early so the situation is really difficult Thank you very much for, for your attention and uh, uh, Incredible India is really incredible. Thank you very much.